always having it with your lovely biscuits. Oh, I do hope they don't make us use that imitation flower again, what with this war trouble and all. It might not seem very charitable of me, but I have almost come to the conclusion that this Mr. Hitler isn't a Christian. <laughs> if only Europe were on another planet. Europe! <laughs> yes, Penny? Point your gun the other way! A gun? Now, to Penny? the west! There's your danger! <laughs> Japan! <laughs> yes, uh, of course, of course. Let's talk about Europe, more about the canal. Now, Teddy, let's not talk about the war. Teddy, would you like another cup of tea? No, thank you. Uh, Dr. Arthur? Uh, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I must say that uh, this talk of war and violence is, is far removed from these surroundings. Oh, it is peaceful here, isn't it? Yes, peaceful. <sighs> Uh, the, the virtues of another day are found right here in this house. Uh, the, the gentle virtues of candlelight, good manners, low taxes. Well, it's one of the oldest houses in Brooklyn, and it's just as it was when Grandfather Brewster built and furnished it, except for the electricity, which we hardly use any of. It was Mortimer who persuaded us to put it in. Uh, uh, I can believe that. Your nephew Mortimer seems to live only by electric light. Oh, he seems to work so late, poor boy. I understand he's taking Elaine with him to the theater again tonight. Oh, Teddy, your brother Mortimer will be here a little later. Do you mind it? <laughs> We're so glad that it's Elaine Mortimer takes to the theater with him. Yes, well, that's a, a new experience for me. Waiting up until three in the morning for my daughter to be brought home. Oh, I, I hope you don't disapprove of Mortimer. Well, we'd well, feel so guilty if you did, Sister Martha and I, after a while, as it was here in our home that your daughter met Mortimer. Yeah, yes, yes, of course. And, and, and so I will say immediately that, 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 that I believe your nephew Mortimer himself uh, to be quite the worthy young gentleman. <laughs> uh, however, I must admit, I... I watched this growing uh, intimacy between him and my daughter with, with some trepidation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but for one reason only. You mean his stomach, Dr. Harper? Uh, stomach? Well, his dyspepsia. He's bothered with it so, poor boy. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, <laughs> I, I shall be forthright. I am speaking of your nephew's unfortunate connection with the theater. Oh, no. Mortimer writes for a New York City newspaper. <coughs> yes, yes, I'm aware of that. Uh, but a uh, dramatic critic is constantly exposed uh, to the theater. And I, I, I don't <laughs> doubt that when some of them uh, do develop an interest in it. Well, not Mortimer. You need have no fear of that, Dr. Harper. Why, Mortimer hates the theater. Really? Oh, he writes such awful things about the theater, but you can't blame him. Uh, he was so happy writing about real estate, which he really knew something about. And then they made him take this terrible night position. My, my. But, as he says, you uh, can't expect the theater to last much longer. And I suppose we should give it a, a dether year or two, perhaps, and then... Oh! oh. <laughs> no, thank you, Teddy. I'll get it. I wonder who that could be. Oh, hello, Mr. Brophy. Hello, Miss Krista. Uh, how are you? Just fine, Miss Krista. Uh, Canna, what news have you brought me? Nothing to report. Splendid. Thank you, sir. Stand at ease. Uh, you know Dr. Harper? Sir, hello, Dr. Harper. Officer? Uh, I've come for the toys, ma'am. For the Christmas fun? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, you know that... That's splendid work you men do, uh, fixing up discarded toys so that the poor children can have a happy Christmas. <laughs> well, you know, it gives me something to do when I'm sitting around the stage. You get tired of playing cards. And then you start to clean your gun. Before you know it, you shot yourself in the foot. <laughs> Teddy, uh, would you mind going up to your Aunt Martha's room and bringing down that large box? Uh, Mr. Brophy, how is Mrs. Brophy today? She has been rather ill, Dr. Harper. No. John! <laughs> you are fine now. Well, a little weak still. Oh, I'll send you over some beef broth to take to her. Ah, uh, don't bother, Miss Abby. 
You've done so much for her already. Oh, our sister Martha and I made some this morning, and she's right now taking some to poor Mr. Beninsky. It won't be a minute. You two sit down and be comfortable, both of you. She shouldn't go to all that trouble. But try to stop her or her sister from doing something nice. <laughs> for nothing. They don't even care how you vote. Yes, they are remarkable women. Yeah. Uh, shortly after I received my call to serve here in Brooklyn, my, oh, my wife became very ill. And, uh, I, I will just say that if I know what pure kindness and absolute generosity are, because I've known the Brewster sisters. <laughs> you promise not to do that. Nonsense! If I am to requisition these supplies, I must first inform my cabinet. <laughs> to do that in the middle of the night. The neighbors would raise cane with us. They're the traitor. Oh, he's, uh, he's quite harmless. I suppose. He does think he's Teddy Roosevelt. There's a lot worse people he could think he was. But it's a damn shame. A nice family like this hatching a cuckoo. You know, his father, the old girl's brother, he was a genius. And his grandfather? Seems to me I heard he was a bit crazy too. But he made a million dollars. Right here in Brooklyn? Yeah. For patent medicine. He's some kind of a quack of some sort. He was the house here, some sort of a clinic to try him out on people. I heard he made mistakes from time to time, but the department never bothered with him much on account of he was so useful in our doctors. Especially poison cases. Well, whatever he did. He left them real sticks for life. Not that they'd ever been any of them. Yes, I'm I well acquainted with the Brewster sisters' many charities. Ah, oh, you don't have to pretend to be. When I was working for the Missing Persons Bureau, yes. we was looking for this guy. Never did find him. <laughs> did you know that there's a renting agency in town that has this house on a list? No, I wasn't oh, aware of that. First rooms, yeah. They don't rent rooms. But you can bet anybody come here looking for a room, want to get a good meal, probably a few yeah. dollars in this yeah. kit. It's just their way of digging up people that do some good too. <laughs> oh, well, now, isn't this nice? How do you do, Mr. Brophy? Uh, Dr. Harper. Miss Martha. I just uh, dropped in to get them Christmas toys. Oh, yes, Teddy, maybe an RV. They were out. They're all packed. Uh, the Colonel's upstairs getting them now. <laughs> Seems the cabinet has to approve it. Yes, of course. Oh, Mrs. Brophy's feeling better. Uh, she's doing fine, then. The sister's getting some soup from her friend to her. Oh, yes. Yeah. <coughs> I just took some to a poor man who broke ever so many bones. Oh, Martha, you, you're back. How is poor Mr. Benitsky? Well, dear, it's pretty serious, I'm afraid. Oh. The doctor was there. He's going to amputate in the morning. Oh. Can we be present? <laughs> no, I asked him, but he said it was against the rules of the hospital. No, you, you two couldn't be of any service. And you, you must learn to spare yourselves. Oh, oh. Mr. Brophy, here's the beef broth. Make oh. sure that it's good and hot. Yes, ma'am. Oh, 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 these are grand. Ah, these will make a lot of kids happy. That old Valley boy is just nuts for some of this. Yes. This is General Miles. I have retired. <laughs> What's this? The Oregon. Teddy, put it back. No, the Oregon's due in Australia. Now, Teddy. I've given my word to Heidi Bobbigans. But to Teddy. <laughs> Bobby Evans, is he your father's I'll be on my way, ma'am. Oh. Thank you very much. Not at all. Not at all. Goodbye. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'd best be getting along myself. Oh, before you go, Dr. Harper, there was something I wanted to... Judge! Judge the Bark House! <laughs> Try to persuade him that he isn't Theodore Roosevelt. Oh, no. He's so happy being Teddy Roosevelt. Once, a long time ago, remember, Martha? We thought that if 
he would be George Washington, it would be a change for him. But he just stayed under his bed for days and just wouldn't be anybody. And we'd so much rather that he'd be Mr. Roosevelt than nobody. Well, if he's happy, and then more importantly, if, if you two are happy. Oh, and uh, you will see that he signs these papers. Oh, yes. What are they? Uh, Dr. Harper has made arrangements for Teddy to go to Happy Dale Sanitarium after we pass on. But why does Teddy sign any papers now? Uh, best to have these things settled. Uh, if the good Lord should take you two unexpectedly, uh, we, we, we might have trouble persuading Teddy to commit himself, and that would lead to an unpleasant legal situation. Uh, now, now uh, uh, Mr. Witherspoon understands fully that, that uh, these papers are to be just kept tucked away until the time comes. Mr. Witherspoon? Who is he? Uh, he is the superintendent of Happy Dale. Dr. Harper has arranged for Mr. Witherspoon to drop by tomorrow or the next day to meet Teddy. <laughs> and uh, now I'd better be getting home or Elaine will be over oh, here uh, looking uh, right for me. Oh, <laughs> of Mortimer because he's a dramatic critic. After all, somebody needs to do those things. <laughs> Did you just have tea? Isn't it rather late? Yes, and dinner is going to be late too. So why? Uh, Teddy, good news, you're going to Panama. We need to dig another lock for the canal. Bully, just bully, splendid! <laughs> I shall prepare for my journey at oh. once. <laughs> Charge! Abby, well, I was out. Well, yes, I didn't know when you'd be back, and Dr. Harper was coming. You was all by yourself. Oh, I managed. Well, I'll just go downstairs and see. Oh, no. No, there wasn't time, and I was all alone. Well? Well, let's take a look in the window seat. Oh, <laughs> Yes. 
A lot of inventiveness, I should say. Guess exactly what you'd say. Where do you want to go for dinner? I don't care. I'm not very hungry. Well, I just had breakfast. What do you suppose we wait until after the show? Well, I'll make it pretty late, won't it? Not with the little stinker we're going to see tonight. What I've heard would be at Blake's by 10 o'clock. You ought to be fair to these plays. Are these plays ever fair to me? I've never seen you walk out on a musical. That musical's not opening tonight. No? Darling, you've got to learn the rules. With the musical, there are always three changes of title and four openings. They liked it in New Haven, but it needs a lot of work. I was hoping it was a musical. You have such a light mind. Not a bit. Musicals somehow have a humanizing effect on you. <coughs> After a play, we joined the proletariat in the subway, and I listened to a lecture on the drama. But after a musical, oh, you bring me home in a taxi. You make a few passes. Oh, no, wait a minute, darling. It's a very inaccurate piece of reporting. Oh, I will admit, after the bourbon play, you told me I had uh, authentic beauty. That's a hell of a thing to say to a girl. <laughs> it wasn't until after our first musical that you told me I had nice legs. And I had up too. For a minister's daughter, you know a lot about life. Where'd you learn it? In the choir loft. I'll explain that to you sometime, <laughs> darling. The close connection between eroticism and religion. Religion never gets as high as the choir loft. Which reminds me, I think I'd better run over and tell Father not to wait up for me. I've never have been able to rationalize it. What? By falling in love with the girl who lives in Brooklyn. Falling in love? You're not stooping to the articulate, are you? The only way I can regain my self-respect is to keep you here in Brooklyn. Did you say keep? No, no, I have a feeling you're holding out for legalities. I can afford to be a good girl for quite a few years yet. And I can't wait that long. Where can we go to be married in a hurry? Say, tonight. Oh, I'm afraid Father will insist on officiating. Oh, God. I bet your father can make even the marriage service sound pedestrian. Are you by any chance writing a review of it? Forgive me, darling. It's an occupational disease. I may have to give that place my good notice. No, darling. Don't pretend you love me that much. Be sure to tell your father not to wait up tonight. Well, I think tonight I'd better tell him to wait up. Oh, I'll tell him to call him to publish the bands. Nevertheless. Oh, all right. Everything all formal and legal, but no later than next month. <laughs> Darling! Oh, I'll talk it over with father and set the date. Uh, no, we'll have to see what's in rehearsal. There'll be a lot of first nights in <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mortimer. How are you, Mr. President? Bully, just bully. What news have you brought me? Just this, Mr. President. The nation stands squarely behind you. I know. <laughs> Isn't it splendid? <sighs> Bibles. I knew the name would be a good influence for you. 
Oh. By the way, I'm going to marry her. Oh, Mortimer! Oh, how wonderful! Oh, Martha! Martha, we have that wonderful news. Mortimer and Elaine are going to be married. Oh, Mary, how oh, oh, is there? Oh, I've always hoped you would come like this. Well, <laughs> Kate must be the happiest girl oh. in the world. Oh. Happy. Just look at her leaping over those gravestones. <laughs> Say, what's that out there? What's what, dear? Out there, in the statue. It's a Horandinda Carnina. Oh, no, dear. That's Emma B. Stout descending to heaven. Oh, no, not Mrs. Stout. On, on Mrs. Stout's left ear. That, that bird. That's a red-crested swallow. I've only seen one of those before in my life. Well, I don't know how you could be talking about birds, what with Elaine and the engagement and everything. Oh, it's a vanishing species. Oh. Thoreau was fond of them. Well, see, that reminds me. I left a large envelope around here some time last week. It was one of my chapters off the row. Have you seen it? Well, well where are you going to be married? And, and what are your plans? And there must be something more you can tell us about Elaine. Well, Elaine thought it was brilliant. What was, dear? My chapter on the road. Well, when Elaine comes back, we'll have to have a celebration. We must drink to your happiness. Martha, is there any more of that Lady Baltimore cake left? Oh, yes. Oh, and I'll open up a bottle of wine. Oh, it didn't oh. make it happened here in this room. Oh. Where did I put that? Oh. Well, with Elaine on your arm tonight, the show is bound to be something that you can enjoy for once. Maybe it will be something romantic. What did you say the name of it was? Murder will out. Oh, dear. When the curtain opens, the first thing you will see will be a dead body. Dr. Harper to see the body. Oh, well, no, not a tea, dear. 
And you know what a knack for mixing things your Aunt Martha has while you've eaten enough of her pickle lily. Well, for every gallon of elderberry wine, I put a teaspoon of arsenic, a half a teaspoon of strychnine, and just a pinch of cyanide. You should have quite the cake. Oh, yes. In fact, one gentleman even had time to say, how delicious. <laughs> Too bad you're not staying with us for dinner. I'm trying out a new recipe. Oh. I couldn't eat a thing. I'll be in to help you shortly. I feel so much better. Uh, oh, you have to wait for a name, don't you? Uh, how happy you must be. I'll just leave you here with your thoughts. Oh, dear. <laughs> Okay, what about one of the office boys? 
the, the new one, the, the bright one, the one we don't like. I really want to see the room. Tommy, it's upstairs, but why don't we sit down and try some of our wine before we start up? I never touch it. Oh, well, it's elderberry <laughs> wine. We make it ourselves. Ah, elderberry wine. Oh, oh and that elderberry oh, wine since I was a boy. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> All right, what, what about uh, one of the printers? Uh, the fellow who sets my copy, he sits three desks down from me. His name is Joe. You ought to know what I write about. Do you have your own elderberry bushes? Oh, well, you could be the next Burns Mantle. No, but the cemetery is full of them. <laughs> no, Al, I'm not drinking, but you gave me an idea. You serve meals. Oh, we may, but first, why don't you try some of our wine? Uh, Mortimer. No, don't uh, Mortimer. <clears throat> not that one. No! 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 Get out of here! Do you want to be poisoned? Do you want to die? Go! Get out of here! <laughs> Like that. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it to you, but not only is it illegal, it's, it's morally wrong. <laughs> it isn't a nice thing to do. People wouldn't understand. He wouldn't understand. I think we should never have told Mortimer. What I mean to say is, well, it's just that this has all developed into a really bad habit. Mortimer, we don't try to change what you like to do, and I don't think you should interfere with what we like to do. <laughs> Hello. All right, I'll go see the first act, and I'll pan the hell out of it. Listen, I need you to do something for me. Get a hold of the head of our legal department, O'Brien. Have him meet me at the theater. Don't let me down now. I'm starting now. I've got to get to the theater. I can't get out of it, but listen. Before I go, will you promise me something? Well, we'd have to know what it was first. <laughs> Mr. Darlings, I love you both very much, and I know you love me. I would do anything in the world for you, and I just need you to do this one little thing for me. What would you like us to do? Don't do anything. I mean, don't do anything. Don't leave the house and leave Mr. Hoskins where he is. Why? I need to think, and I've got quite a little to think about. I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. Well, what on earth would happen to us? Anyway, will you do this for me? Well, we were planning on holding services before dinner. Services? Certainly. You don't think we'd bury Mr. Hoskins without a full Methodist service here. <laughs> Why? He was a Methodist. Couldn't I wait until after I get back? Uh, oh, so, so you could join us. Yes, yes, oh, I could join you. How wonderful, Martha. You would love the services, especially the hymns. Remember, Martha, how beautiful his voice sounded when he sang in the choir before his voice changed. Oh. Anyway, oh. it's a promise. You won't leave the house, and you'll leave Mr. Hoskins where he is. <coughs> well, uh, well, since Mortimer is agreeing to cooperate with us, I think we can help. Yes, Mortimer, we will. Good. Have you got some paper? Uh, There's a man I've got to see. Uh, well, stationary, do. That should be fine. Mm -hmm. Save some time if I write my review on the way to the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. 
Do you recognize them? They're strangers to me. Oh. Well, we're just going to have to pretend that we're not home. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Come in, Doctor. This is the home of my youth. As a boy, I couldn't wait to escape from this place, and now I'm glad to be escaping back. Gotcha. It's a fine paper. <laughs> the family must still live here. There's something so unmistakably Brewster about the Brewsters. I hope there's a fatted calf awaiting the return of the prodigal. Yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> Look, Jimmy, dreams. As though we were expected. Oh, but who are you and, and what are you doing here? Why, Aunt Abby and Martha, it's Jonathan. You're not Jonathan. You're nothing like Jonathan, so just go away. I'm Jonathan, your nephew, Jonathan. You get out of here. You're not Jonathan. You're nothing like him. Stop pretending you are. But I am Jonathan, and this is Dr. Einstein. You and he's not Dr. Einstein either. Not Dr. Albert Einstein. <laughs> Dr. Herman Einstein. No, not either, Jonathan. You're just pretending you are. So you just leave. Uh oh. I see you're still wearing the lovely garnet ring that Grandma Brewster bought you in England. And you, Aunt Martha, still the high collar to hide the scars where Grandfather's acid burned you. Well, his voice does sound like Jonathan's. Were you in an accident? Oh, no, my face. Dr. Einstein is responsible for that. He's a plastic surgeon who changes people's faces. Oh, Abby, I've seen that face before. Remember when we went to the movie with the little soul boy? And I was so frightened. It was that face. Oh. Easy, <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Don't worry, ladies. The last five years, I give Johnny Drino faces. I give him a new one right away. And this last face, well, uh, I saw the picture too, uh, right before I operated, uh, and I was intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what you've done, Doctor? Not even my own family recognizes me, Johnny. Your home, in this lovely house. How often he tells me about Brooklyn, about his house, about his aunts that he loves so much. And your home, Johnny, they know you, and you know it's Jonathan. And speak to him, tell him so. Well, Jonathan, you've been gone a long time. What have you been doing? Yes, Jonathan, where have you been? Oh, well, England, South Africa, Australia, for the last five years, Chicago. Dr. Einstein and I were in business together there. Oh, Chicago. Oh, we've been there at the World's Fair. We found <coughs> Chicago ugly warm. Yeah, it got hot for us too, <laughs> Well, it's lovely to be back in Brooklyn again. And you, Abby, Martha, you don't look a day older, just as I remembered you. Sweet, charming, <coughs> hospitable, and Teddy. Did he get into politics? <laughs> My brother, doctor, was determined to become president. <clears throat> Teddy's doing fine. Teddy's well. And Mortimer's good, too. I know about Mortimer. I've seen his picture at the top of his column. And evidently, he's fulfilled all the promise of his early nasty nature. We're very fond of Mortimer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was awfully nice of you to have come to visit us, Jonathan. <laughs> Bless you, Aunt Martha. It's good to be home again. Well, Martha, we should go check on what's boiling in the kitchen. <laughs> if you'll just wait a minute for us, and unless you're in a hurry to go somewhere. <laughs> Don't waste any worry on that rat. Oh, but Johnny, we got a hot stick on our hands. Forget Mr. Spinalzo. Oh, but you can't just leave a dead body in the rumble seat. 
<laughs> you shouldn't have killed him, Chung. He's a nice fellow. He gives us a lift. But for what? He said I looked like Boris Karloff. <laughs> <laughs> you did that to me, Doctor. That's your work. Don't worry. I have fix you up. Don't worry. Tonight. Oh, no, Chung. I'm hungry. I'm pleased. Mm. <clears throat> Jonathan, we are grateful that you stopped by to say hello to us, but you were not happy when you lived here, and we were not happy with you living here. So uh, we have just come by to say goodbye. Hey, Tabby. I can't say that your feelings toward me come as a surprise. I've spent many years regretting the terrible heartaches that must have caused you as a boy. You were quite a trial to us, Jonathan. But my greatest disappointment is for Dr. Einstein. I promised him that no matter how rushed we were in passing through Brooklyn, that we'd bring him by the house for one of Aunt Martha's home-cooked dinners. Oh, no, I'm afraid there won't be enough. Oh, Abby, it's a pretty good-sized pot roast. Pot roast! I think the least we could do is Oh, thank you, Aunt Martha. We'll stay to dinner. Uh, well, I'll help you, help you and hurry along. You'll probably want to wash up, and you can use one of the washrooms in Grandfather Brewster's old laboratory. Is that still there? Yes, just as it was. Well, I'll help uh, hurry things along since you are in such a hurry. Yeah, have you got to me at any rate? Grandfather's laboratory. And just as it was, Doctor. A perfect operating room. Too bad we can't use it. Oh, after you're finished with me, well, we can make a fortune here. The large ward in the attic. Ten beds, Doctor. Half of Brooklyn is crying for your talents. Why oh, work yourself up? Besides, for Brooklyn, I think we are here to raise. <laughs> no, pretty much all of them need new faces. Oh, but so many of the old faces are locked up. A very small percentage. Besides, <coughs> the boys in Brooklyn are famous for paying generously to stay out of jail. Oh, but Johnny, your aunts, they don't want us here. We're here for dinner, aren't we? Hey, yeah, what happened here? Leave it to me, Doctor. I'll handle this. Why, this house will be our headquarters for years to come. That would be beautiful. <coughs> this nice, quiet house. Those aunts of yours. What sweet ladies. I love them already. I go take the bags, yeah? Doctor, we must wait until we're invited. And if you should go, we'll be invited. Just think. Two helpless old women. <coughs> <laughs> Five years in Chicago were some of the busiest and happiest of my life. Ah, and from Chicago we go to South Bend, Indiana. They wouldn't be interested in our time in Indiana. Well, you have led a very interesting life, I'm sure, but we really shouldn't have allowed you to talk so late. My meeting Dr. Einstein in London changed the course of my life. Now you remember I'd been in South Africa in the diamond business, and then Amsterdam in the diamond market. Well, I wanted to go back to South Africa, and Dr. Einstein made that possible for me. A good job, Johnny. When we take the bandages off, he looks so different. The nurse had to introduce me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that face. I still carry a photograph book in my pocket. Oh, well, this does look the way you used to look, but still I wouldn't recognize you. I think we'll go back to that face, Doctor. Yeah, it's safe now. 
Well, I'm sure you need to get going to wherever you're going. My dear aunties, I'm so full from that delicious meal that I cannot move a muscle. I found it! I found it! <laughs> what did you find, Teddy? My biography. It's the story of my life. General! <laughs> I found that picture I was telling you about. <laughs> there it is, the two of us. President Roosevelt and General Goffles at Culebra Cut. See, General, that's me. That one's you. My. How I've changed. <laughs> <laughs> How about you see this photo hasn't been taken yet? We haven't even started work on Culebra Cut. We're still digging the locks for the canal. <laughs> and now, General, you shall join me in Panama for an inspection of the locks. Uh, no, Teddy, not Panama. And people should have the type. If Panama is the wrong way, oh, well. Nonsense, it's just down in the cellar, you silly man. <laughs> the cellar? Let him dig the Panama Canal into the cellar. Well, now, General, as President of the United States, Commander in Chief of the Army and Navy, and the man who gave you this position, I order you to join me on an inspection of the lock. <laughs> Teddy, I think it's time you went to bed. I beg your pardon. And who are you? <laughs> I'm Woodrow Wilson. Now go to bed. <laughs> now you aren't Wilson. But I recognize your face. Perhaps you're someone I haven't met yet. <laughs> yes, perhaps on my hunting trip to Africa, you look like someone I would meet in the jungle. Uh, no, Teddy. This is your brother, Jonathan. He's had his face changed. Oh, so that's it. <laughs> A nature faker. <laughs> now, Teddy, perhaps you should go to bed because uh, Jonathan and his friend will be going to their hotel. General Goggles, inspect the canal. Oh, uh, aye, aye, Mr. President. You go to Panama. That's bully. Just bully. <laughs> Follow me, General. It's down south, you know. Voyage. <laughs> <laughs> and Abby, I must correct your misapprehension. You spoke of our hotel. Well, we have no hotel. We came directly here. Well, there's a nice little one just two blocks away. Aunt Martha, this is my home. No, Jonathan, you cannot stay here. We need our rooms. You need them? For our lodgers. Are there lodgers in this house? Well, not right now, but we intend to have some. Well, fine, then my old room is free. Uh, there is no room for Dr. Einstein. Dr. Einstein and I can share the room. No, Jonathan, I'm afraid you cannot <coughs> stay here. Aunt Abby, you remember this afternoon that I could be a bit disagreeable. Well, it'd be very unfortunate for any of us if that were to happen Perhaps again. we should let them stay for the night. Well, just for overnight, Jonathan. Let it's settled. Now, if you'll get my room ready. I told you he's airing out. We keep it ready to show our lodgers. I think that you and Dr. Einstein will find it most comfortable. You two are very distinguished guests in Dr. Einstein, but I'm afraid you don't appreciate his talents. But you soon will. <coughs> In a few weeks, you'll see me looking like a very different Jonathan. He can't operate on you here. When Dr. Einstein and I resume practice, we... Well, I forgot to tell you. We're turning grandfather's laboratory into an operating room. We expect to be very busy. Uh, I will not let you turn this house into a hospital. <laughs> a hospital? Heavens no! It'll be a beauty parlor. Hey, Johnny, Johnny, the cell. Oh, Dr. Ryan. <laughs> My aunts have invited us to live with them. Oh, you please. Well, you can stay here tonight. Please get our room ready immediately. Well, for tonight. Johnny, when I go down in the cell, what do you think I find? What? The Panama Canal. <laughs> <laughs> the Panama Canal. Oh. It's 
It's a bold, heavy tag. It just fits Mr. Spenard, so six feet long, four feet wide. Down there. Yeah. You think they knew we were coming? <laughs> That's hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> what a joke on my aunts. They're living in a house with a body buried in the cellar. Yeah. <laughs> they get you in here? Yes. <coughs> we just can't bring him in through the front door. We'll drive the car up in between the house and the cemetery, and then when they've gone to bed, we'll bring Mr. Spinalzo in through the window. <coughs> just think, Johnny. We've gone to bed tonight. <laughs> Easy, doctor. You're operating tomorrow, and this time you'd better be sober. I fix you up, beautiful. And you don't. Your room is ready. Then you two can run along to bed. We're moving the car up alongside the house. Oh, well, it's fine where it is until morning. I don't want to leave it in the street. It might be against the law. Abby, oh, what are we going to do? Well, I'll tell you one thing. We won't let them stay in this house more than one night. Well, what would the neighbors think? People walking in here with one face and walking out with another? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
you see? J just that, that's all. I, well, that's why I came over here. I was going to tell Miss Abby to call the police, but well, if it was you and if that's your car, I don't need to bother Miss Abby and I'll be running along. What was the man doing at the car? Well, I don't know. I was on my way over here. I think you're lying. Oh. I think she tells the truth, Johnny. Will you let her go, okay? I think she's lying. I think she's dangerous. She shouldn't be let around loose. Oh, why don't you take your hands off Doctor. me? Doctor! Oh. What's going on in this 
house. Well, we were supposed to go to dinner in the theater tonight. You called it off. You asked me to marry you. I said I wouldn't five minutes later. You throw me out of the house, and, and tonight, after your brother tries to strangle me, you want to chase me home. Now, well, listen, Mr. Brewster, before I go home, I want to know where I stand. Do you love me? I love you very much, Elaine. In fact, I love you so much that I can't marry you. Well, have you suddenly gone crazy? No, I don't think so, but it's just a matter of time. <laughs> you see, insanity runs in my family, but practically gallops. <laughs> That's why I can't marry you, dear. Wait a minute. You're going to have to do better than that. Oh, no, no, it's true. There's a strange taint on the Brewster blood. If you really knew my family, it's, well, it's what you'd expect of Strindberg and written hell's upon it. Well, not just because Teddy is a little... Well, it's not just Teddy. It's the whole family. It goes all the way back, back to the first Brewster who came over on the Mayflower. Back in those days, the, uh, the Indians used to scout the settlers. Well, he used to scout the Indians. <laughs> Mortimer, that's ancient history. Oh, no, no. Take my grandfather. He used to try his patent medicines out on dead people just to be sure he wouldn't kill them. <laughs> he's so crazy, he made a million dollars. And then there's Jonathan. He just told me he's a maniac. He tried to strangle you. Well, he's your brother, not you. I'm in love with you. And then there's Teddy. You know Teddy. He thinks he's Roosevelt. No, darling. No Brewster should ever marry. I realize now that if I had met my father in time, I would have tried to stop him. <laughs> now, Mortimer, all of a sudden prove that you're crazy. Look at your aunts. Well, they're Brewsters, aren't they? And the same sweetest people I've ever known. Yes, well, even they have their peculiarities. <laughs> well, yes, but... Well, but lots of peculiarities. Kindness, generosity, human sympathy. There's another one. <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of others you can't tell me anything about your aunt. And I'm not going to, Elaine. Look, you've got to get out of here. Something's just come up. Well, I swear, we are here alone together. I know I'm behaving irrationally, but you just put it down to me being a mad person. Well, if you think you're going to get out of this by pretending that you're insane, you are crazy. <laughs> Jonathan, you're beginning to bore me. 
<laughs> we played your one night stand in Brooklyn, now it's time for you to leave. Mortimer, just because you graduated from the back of the fence of the typewriter doesn't mean you've grown up. I'm staying, and you're leaving. And I mean now. If you think that I can be frightened, oh, and if you think that there's anything I fear, I've lived a strange life, Mortimer, but if it's tough to leave one thing, it's to be afraid of nothing. Martha, just take a look and see what's in that window seat. No, I have <laughs> Oh, um, uh, is this your case? 
Yes, Jonathan. You can't leave without taking everything with you. Well, Officer O'Hara, it was nice to meet you. I look forward to seeing you again. We'll discuss your play then. Oh, I ain't leaving now, Mr. Brewster. But well, why not? Well, you just offered to help me with my play, Mr. Brewster. I mean, you and me, we was going to write my play together. I can't do that, Officer O'Hara. I'm, I'm not a creative. And no, 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 I'll do the creating. You just put the weights to it. Oh, no, I... No, sir. What I am not leaving this house until I tell you the plot. Wait, well, wait. in that case, Mortimer will be leaving. Don't you try that. You can't leave until you take everything with you. <coughs> Look, all right. Well, my brother's just running along here. You go. I can wait. I've been waiting 12 years. <laughs> Sorry, I was so long. Well, don't bring that in here. Look, I'm here. I'm in the kitchen. The kitchen? Well, Jonathan's leaving. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> You won't mind eating in the kitchen, Mr. O'Hara? Yeah, where else would you eat? Oh, right? Well, Jonathan, it was uh, good to see you again. I'm glad you came back to Brooklyn, Jonathan, because it gives me the chance to throw you out. And the first one out will be your boyfriend, Mr. Spinoza. I never forgot. We can chat in here, okay? I'll be right there. I might have known you to grow up and write a play with the police. Well, I'll get going, all three of you. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, this affair between my brother and me has got to be settled. We've got trouble enough. Your brother gives us a chance to get away. What more can you ask? Oh, you don't understand. This goes back many, many years. Now, sure, me. And let's get going. Oh, we're not going. We're staying right here. We'll get the cup in the kitchen. And Mr. Spinazzo, the window seat. <laughs> That's all they've got on us. Now listen, we're going to bring Mr. Spinoza down and dump him in the bay, and we're going to come right back here. If they try to get in there, what's me? Doctor, you know when I made up my mind. Yeah, when you make up your mind, you lose your head. It ain't a good place for you. Doctor. Hmm. All right, we stick together. Someday we get stuck together. If we're coming right back, and we've got to shrap all this stuff with us, no. Hide in the cellar. Move fast. Yeah. Spinoza can go out the same way he came in. Years. 
for a chance like this. Doctor, bring our bags back to the room. Have they gone? Oh, uh, no, no, I thought we heard someone leave. It was just Mortimer, but he'll be back soon. Is there any food left in the kitchen? I think Dr. Einstein and I would like a bite. But you won't have any time. No, if you're still here when Mortimer gets back, he won't like it. Oh, he like it. He's good to like it. <laughs> Get some food for us to eat while we bury Mr. Spinozo in the cellar. Oh, you yeah. can't bury Mr. Spinozo in our cellar. You've got to take him with you. Well, there's a friend of Mortimer's down there. A friend of Mortimer's? Yes. They'll get along fine together. They're both dead. <laughs> oh, he must be Mr. Hoskins. Oh, Mr. Hoskins? <laughs> Wait, do you know about what's down in the cellar? <laughs> of course we do, and it's no friend of Mortimer's. Why, he's one of our gentlemen. You're gentlemen. We won't have any strangers buried in our cellar. But, Mr. Hoskins. Mr. <coughs> Hoskins, no stranger. Besides, there's no room. It's crowded already. Crowded? <laughs> what? Well, there are twelve graves down there now. <laughs> twelve graves? And that leaves very little room, and we're going to need it. You mean that you and Martha have murdered? No! Oh, no. These gentlemen are our charity. What we're doing is mercy. So you can just take your Mr. Spinozo out of here. <laughs> You've done that in this house. And then bury them down there. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, we get chased all over the world. And they stay right here at Brooklyn. They do just as good as you do. <laughs> <coughs> what? Well, you've got 12, and well, they've got 12. <laughs> I've got 13. Not Johnny, 12. 13! Now there's Mr. Spinozo. There's the one in London, two in Johannesburg, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, two in San Francisco, uh, one in Phoenix, Arizona, Phoenix. the filling station, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three in Chicago, and one in South Bend. That makes 13. No, John, you can't count the one in South Bend. He died of pneumonia. He wouldn't have had pneumonia if I hadn't shot him. No, John, he, he died of pneumonia. He don't count. Well, he counts with me, and I say 13. Oh, Johnny, you've got 12, and they've got 12. Your the ladies are just as good as you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are they? <coughs> well, that's easily fixed, isn't it? All I need is one more. That's all. Just one more. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's a dream. I know. 
you know what Jonathan's doing down there? Why, he's putting Mr. Hoskins and Mr. Spinoso in together. Oh, he is, is he? Mm -hmm. Well, let him. Oh. Is Teddy in his room? Well, Teddy won't be of any help. Oh, if I can get Teddy to sign these papers, then I can take care of Jonathan. Well, I don't see what that has to do with anything. Well, you had to go and tell Jonathan about those 12 grades. Uh, if I can put that on, on Teddy, then I can protect you, don't you see? Uh, no, I don't see. And we pay taxes to have the police protect us. Come on, come on. We the police. All right. No, the police. You can't go for the police. Well, why not? Because if you go for the police and tell them about Mr. Spinalzo, then they might find out about Mr. Hoskins. And then they might find out about your other 12 gentlemen and... and, and, and that might make curious. Lord, I think we know the police better than you do. And they will not pry into our private affairs if we ask them not to. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, gentlemen, they, they have to report to headquarters. Well, I don't think they bother. They have to write out an awfully long report, and there's one thing the policeman hates to do. It's to write. Well, you can't count on that if I leak out. And you can't expect a judge and jury to understand. Oh, Judge Coleman would. Uh, we know Judge Coleman very well. He always comes to church to pray, mm -hmm. just before election. And he's coming to our house to tea. He promised. Oh, Abby, you need to speak to him about that. His wife died a few years ago, and it's left him very lonely. Oh. <laughs> well, Martha, I have a No, no, no. You can't do this. You can't leave the house, and you can't have Judge Coleman to tea. Oh. Well, if you are not going to do something about Mr. Spinalzo, then we are. I am going to do something about Mr. Spinalzo. Maybe we'll have to go for the police later, but if we do, I want to be ready for them. You have to get Jonathan out of this house. And Mr. Spinalzo. Will you please let me do this my way? I have to go see Teddy. Mortimer, if they're not out of this house by morning, we are going for the police. Oh, they'll be out, I promise you. <sighs> go to bed, will you? And for God's sake, get out of those clothes. You look like Judith Anderson. Well, that's a relief, isn't it, Abby? Well, if Mortimer is going to do something about it, then Jonathan is just behaving unnecessarily, and he will have to be stopped. Well, Jonathan, you're just going to stop what you're doing because Mortimer is going to be having it out of this house. He promised. Well, it's all done. Now, did I hear Mortimer? Well, it will just have to be undone. <coughs> he promised you're going to be out of this house. Well, then you two can run along to bed and have a pleasant night's sleep. Yes, Abby. Good night, aunties. Uh, not good night, Jonathan. Goodbye. You're going to be out of this house by the time we wake up. Mortimer's promise. And he has a way of doing it, too. Mm. So he is back. He's upstairs talking with Teddy. Mm. Goodbye, Jonathan. Goodbye, Jonathan. Perhaps you'd better say goodbye to Mortimer. Oh, you'll see Mortimer. Oh, yes. I'll mm. see Mortimer. Oh. <coughs> It's all fixed up. <coughs> Smooth like a lake. Nobody ever know they're down there. That bed feels good already. Forty-eight hours we didn't sleep. Come, Johnny, let's go to bed. Doctor, you're forgetting something. My brother Mortimer! Oh, Charlie, tonight? <coughs> we do that tomorrow or the next day. No, Doctor, tonight. Now! <coughs> Charlie, please. I'm tired. And tomorrow I got to operate. Yes, Doctor, you're operating tomorrow, but tonight we take care of Mortimer. Charlie, not tonight. We go to well, Doctor, look at me. You can see it's going to be done, can't you? A little late now to dissolve our partnership, isn't it? Okay, we do it. But a quick way, a quick twist like in London. No. <laughs> no, Doctor. I think this calls for something a little more special. I think perhaps the Melbourne method. Oh, no. Not Two hours! <laughs> and it was all over. But the fellow in London was just as dead as the fellow in Melbourne. 
We had to work too fast in London. There was no aesthetic satisfaction in it. But the Melbourne method leaves something to remember. Remember? I wish I didn't. Oh. Oh, no, Jim. Not Melbourne. Not me. Yes, Doctor. Where are your instruments? I won't do it, Johnny. I won't do it. Get your instruments. No, Johnny. Where are they? Oh, yes. You hid them in the cellar, didn't you? Where? I will tell you. <laughs> oh, I'll find them, Doctor. <laughs> If I ever signed any proclamation, I must first inform my cabinet. But it must be a secret. <laughs> <laughs> a secret proclamation? Yes, Japan must never know. Japan, those yellow devils. I shall sign it at once. You have my word. I'll go with you. No. Secret proclamation must be signed in secret. At once, Mr. President. I have to put on my signing clothes. <laughs> Achievement. 
After all, we're performing for a very distinguished critic. Oh, Johnny. Doctor. Let's get it over with. All ready for the doctor. You have to have a drink. I can't operate without a drink. Doctor, pull yourself together. I got to have a drink. I got to <laughs> we came in here this afternoon. There was wine. Remember? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Johnny, wine. Oh, that soldier is. I spit it with you. <laughs> Just a little bit. Doctor, where are your manners? My dear Mortimer, I realize now it was you who brought me back to Brooklyn. Doctor, to my dear dead brother. Damn that idiot! He goes next, that's all there is to it. No. He's next! No, not Ted. That's where I stop. Not Ted. We get to Teddy later, but now we've got to move fast. Ah, the quick way. Yes, Doctor, the quick way. Hey! Open up! Oh. <laughs> Alright, the Colonel's got to quit blowing that horn. Uh, we're very sorry, officer. We're taking the bugle away from him. That's going to be hell to pay. We promised the neighbors he wouldn't be doing that no more. It won't happen again. Now, good night. Yeah, I better speak for myself. Hey! <laughs> you stood me up. I waited an hour. <laughs> what happened to him? Uh, he was just explaining to the train he saw tonight. That's what happened to the fairy in the prey. <laughs> Hey, uh, did they really do that in the plane store tonight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, gee, they practically stole that from the second act of my play. In the second act of my play, it's open. No, 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 better begin at the beginning. So we opened in my mother's dressing room where I'm born, and of course, you ain't born yet, so. Huh? Okay. You know what? No. You gotta get the <laughs> Miss Latour, will you marry me? Wait, 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 wait. You don't know she's pregnant, though, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't let anybody in. 
Alright, so I figured I'm going to have a smog, you know? So there's a vacant house at the corner. So I go in. It's cops! So I'm standing there in the dark. And then I see the door handle. Cops! Cops! Oh my god! I braced myself against the wall and I said, Come in! And this.
find out anything about his accomplice. He's wanted too. It's no wonder Brooklyn's in the shape it's in. Flatheads like you believe in anything. Thirteen bodies buried in a cellar. Yeah, but there are thirteen bodies buried in the cellar. <laughs> Who are you? I'm President Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> He's the guy that blows the bugle. Morning, Colonel. <coughs> You've blown your last bugle. Oh, dear me. Is this another yellow fever victim? <laughs> <laughs> All the bodies in the cellar are yellow fever victims. <laughs> 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 I kind of in the way. A spy! Well, if there's to be a question of spies, I shall have one. You get out <laughs> Sir, you're forgetting the President of the United States.
Why, we promised to take the bugle away from Teddy. The papers are all signed. He's going to the superintendent. Oh, well, if, if he goes, then we go. Yeah, she'll have to take us with him. Well, why not? Well, it's sweet of them to want to, but it's just not possible. We can't take sane people at Happy Dale. <laughs> Mr. Witherspoon, if you let us live with Teddy, we'll see that Happy Dale is in our will, and for a very generous amount. Well, Lord knows we could use the money, but... <laughs> Come on, ladies, let's be reasonable with this. I've already wasted my whole morning. You know, it's going bad enough as it is. If we keep going like this, we're going to have a whole team of people digging up that cellar. Our cellar? Yes. Your nephew's been telling anyone that'll listen. There's 13 bodies buried down there. But there right. are 13 bodies buried in our cellar. <laughs> oh, oh that's why you think Teddy has to go.
uh, Mortimer, but we are worried about something. Oh, dear. Oh, don't worry about anything. You're going to love it at Happy Days. Oh, yes, yeah, we're very happy about the whole thing. Uh, that's just it. We don't want anything to go wrong. Uh, you see, you signed, and we are they going to investigate those signatures? Oh, I don't think you have to worry about them investigating Dr. Einstein. Oh, well, it's not Dr. Einstein's signature we're worried about, dear. It's yours. You see, you signed as next of kin. Yes, of course. Why not? Well, see, dear, this is something we really never wanted to tell you, but uh, you're a man now, and Elaine, we should know too. You see, dear, you're not really a Brewster. I'm not? Well, your mother came to us as a cook, and you were born three months later. And she was such a good cook and such a sweet woman, we didn't want to lose her, so brother married her. You mean I'm a... I'm not really a, a rooster? Oh, don't be upset about it, dear. And it doesn't matter to Elaine. Elaine? <laughs> you realize what this means? I'm a master! <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I can still see the